enough is enough! Hello there, my name is Alwaffer, and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Rolferichness. Now at the upload of this video, this creature is rather new, so everything I say may be temporarily. If you find strategies that are better than the ones I say here, do feel free to share them. In this video we'll be going over the following topics. Also, this creature is a bit unique, which is why the fights are, well, a bit weak. I'll come back to that later, but for now, let's just hop into it. Now, I'm just gonna get it out of the way. The Rogue for Rignus is not a combat creature. It does not have any direct attacks of its own. It is mainly support. I mean, you can try, but it'll eventually get awkward. It has one slot for head ability, but it has five options. The first one are just your standard bite, however this one is a bit unique. It does no damage to players, it can only hurt critters and or other AIs. The second option is a new ability, Bloodsucker. This ability heals the player with each bite. Each bite also makes the opponent bleed. At the five bites stacked on top of each other after each other, you will also give the opponent a woozing effect. This effect decreases your opponent's turning speed by 50% for 10 seconds, however it's only usable when you latch on your, to your opponent. Conehead just makes you more aerodynamic and also makes you sound you have less IQ. Scab Picker doesn't do any damage on its own, it only reduces the target bleed regeneration. It can be stacked up to 10 times but are only usable when you are latched onto your target. Spearfishing are just you declaring that you will no longer eat land meat and you just go fishing. The instant stamina regeneration are rather nice though. Your three options for sensibilities, the first one being flock migration. This just decreases the stamina usage for all group members. There's a lot on play carrier. Summarize, this is just you giving a debuff to anything and everyone that is not in your group within a 30 meters area. This will only activate when you latch onto your target and it only double downs that their own for are nothing but a flying pest. Strong lungs, congratulations. Something on you grows bigger when you are in close proximity of something you like to see. This phenomenon has also been seen in male humans' nether regions. This usually happens when they are close proximity to a female, other males, or sometimes even children. There are two slots for frontly, meaning we can equip two abilities. The first one are barrel roll. This makes you dash forward while doing a spinny and also causing damage to anything you hit. However, in my opinion, it does more damage to you than you will do to your opponent. It's basically just a glorified kamikaze. Wait, all kamikaze are technically glorified? Second option, dart are the same, but it's only meant to use against AI. It does nothing to players. Scatter are just meant to give you an easier time after you're done latching onto an opponent. We have two options for hide, the first one being hollow bones, which sounds like it should have been under the category of legs, but whatever. The second ability are seabirds, and if you really think about it, considering what these two abilities does to you, it really makes it feel like you're going to choose between being a annoying condescending raven or an even more annoying seagull. The option for legs, the first one being emergency exit, jumps are increased when in combat, web feet boost you in water, and a possibility that makes you more annoying than a mosquito. Tail abilities has only one option, brothers, that boosts you in several areas. Or option for the voice too you can equip, the first one being Bloodthirsty Hunters, which sounds scary but considering the size of the creature you are playing, it's not really that threatening. Lord of Terrors is a knight ability that boosts you in several areas and also nerfing others within a proximity. It doesn't work if you're in a group or in combat, so it's a pacifist ability, in which case the name might be a bit misleading. Blooding Whispers is a damage increasing ability that only works when you latch onto other creatures. Rat out are only meant to keep people from sneaking up on you. When players come within a certain proximity of you, they will broadcast, giving away their location. This ability doesn't work when you are in combat. Against any creatures, this is the arsenal I recommend. You're probably going to have to play the support role at most, so this is the best suited one. If you do get in a group, which you probably will, I will recommend switching back and forth between the head abilities. 
If there's a lot of you, then just make sure that you can give all types of debuff to your enemy. I do believe it's a bit too early to give a final verdict when it comes to subspecies. However, from the experience I've gotten so far, faster cooldown and health stealing are one of the better choices. I am leaning towards faster cooldown a bit more though. You see, most creatures can one-shot you, and what good is health stealing if there's no health to restore? You can fly, swim, run on ground rather fast despite being a flyer, and due to your rather small size you won't really have too much trouble flying through a thick forest. In other words, terrain is really not a factor. As for fighting style, it's pretty much set in stone that you are a support creature. Taking hits and run, just a nibble once or twice, Make sure your opponent get those debuffs and then have other strong creatures as your teammates have them kill your opponent. You see, here's the thing about trying to be a solo run for Rickness. I think you understand. Playing solo as this thing? Pointless. But I want to hammer down? Make some new friends. Big ones if you can. When the opportunity arises, have them do the dirty work. What you should aim for is to make sure that your enemy get their debuffs. Try to get as many fights in as you can. But if you're not too sure on your own skill, then one bite is enough. Some debuff are better than no debuff. Of course, there is one way you can defeat an enemy 1v1. Look, I even defeated an Apex using this method. This will be a drawn out battle, however, if you execute the method perfectly, victory will be yours. First step, you attack. Make sure that you're out of the reach for their counter-attack. Then you continue being a thorn in their very existence for a little while. Also, just in case if you didn't notice, but because your attacks doesn't do any direct damage, it won't count as them being in combat. Why this is relevant, you ask? Well... Through sheer perseverance and the talent for being a little shit, you can make your opponent disappear from the world in another way. If you have any specific issues you want me to cover and don't know how to suggest them, go to my community post, find the most recent post regarding the matter and all the information should be there. With that, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later.